All right. Uh, uh, Rabbi Mark Schneier ha has been working with the leaders in the Gulf for uh, the last 10 years. He's the president of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, and he joins me now live. Rabbi, you wrote an op-ed in Arab News, uh, and you said we'll see at least one more Gulf state established relations with Israel this year. Um, could you expand on that? It's in my front page op-ed in today's Arab News, I do believe that by the end of 2020, we'll see one, if not two, Gulf states uh, that will normalize relations with Israel. We're in the midst of a very healthy competition. Um, it's like a horse race. There are six uh, Gulf states that are vying to cross the finish line. Uh, UAE won the prize yesterday. Uh, I believe behind UAE is Bahrain, uh, Saudi Arabia, Oman, um, Qatar, uh, Kuwait is lacking behind. But I do believe that Bahrain can very well be the next state to normalize relations with Israel. All right. And, and let's talk, because what we're showing here are images from East Jerusalem of Palestinians extremely unhappy with this deal. They believe that the UAE stabbed them in the back. They're getting nothing out of this and that annexation suspended, not halted entirely, is quite meaningless. W what would you tell them? For the Palestinians. Uh, unfortunately, you know, their reaction is very similar to what I witnessed last June in Bahrain at the Peace to Prosperity Conference, despite the fact that representatives of Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, of course, Bahrain gathered with the Israeli delegation uh, to try and bring economic opportunities and empowerment to the Palestinian people. They should be grateful to the UAE. The UAE single-handedly rescued a two-state solution once there would have been annexation. That two-state solution is off the table. So, if anything, I think they should be overjoyed today and appreciate the historic role that UAE played here in normalizing ties with Israel. But it's, you, you think they should be joyful at the at this at the situation they find themselves in today? Because they would argue there are settlers on on land that is meant to be. Uh, used in a future Palestinian state. They won't get East Jerusalem. They have no self-determination, no autonomy, no control over many of the roads crossing through the West Bank. And, but you believe they should be joyful? Yes. Um, your point about settlements in the Saudi Peace Initiative, known as the Arab League Initiative of 2002, uh, there was a, an accord there um, that there will be a swapping of lands. If there are settlements um, in the West Bank that Israel would return uh, the equal proportion of those lands, you know, from the Negev. I think this is a time of economic empowerment and opportunity. I have witnessed firsthand last year in Bahrain that the Gulf states today recognize that they have skin in the game. They need to be directly involved in bringing the economic opportunities and empowerment to the Palestinian people. That's the direction that uh, this movement of reconciliation is moving towards. And I think it's another step in a very, very positive direction and a very important journey. All right. Thank you for uh, joining us, Rabbi uh, Schneier, for your views, uh, the president of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding. Uh